Hai Assalamualaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh to Sir Muhammad Nur bin Muhammad So today our group will be presenting the 2D sport skill analysis for bowling for SPS 612 sports and exercise biomechanics So this is the group members I will introduce myself first My name is Hanif Muzaffa bin Ahmad Ibrahim The next one is Muhammad Mushid bin Komari and followed by Muhammad Amshar bin Giman As you can see, this is the topics that we are going to cover in this uh, presentation firstly we have the introduction of the skills secondly we have the kinetic and kinematic analysis of sport skills next is the steps for maximizing skill performance and lastly is the conclusions okay so we will talk about release and follow through skill in bowling okay for release is when you uh, release the bowling ball but uh, from your stand and how you hold hold the ball and then how you release it your thumb movement your wrist movement your elbow movement your shoulder movement okay so that is release and how you grip the ball also a release uh, and for the follow through it is the follow through after you release the ball and the function of the follow through is for the accuracy and the speed uh, toward the target which is bowling pin movement of the skill okay for movement of the skill basically you will use uh, all of your hand for the release and follow through movement which is you use from shoulder elbow wrist and thumb okay next it depends on how the bowler when the ball uh, roll at the lane if the if the bowler when uh, straight ball or curve ball it is you will use a uh, different movement and third there is three technique for changing how the ball roll which is uh, relax firm and strong so for relax is for the straight ball for firm is for the medium hook, hook and strong for the most hook so for muscles and bone involvement at the elbow extension to elbow flexion there is tricep brachi that involve at shoulder and hip rotation, there is a uh, supraspinatus, infrapinatus, teres minor, subscapularis, and quadratus lumborum muscle that involve. And for the wrist flexion to wrist extension, there is flexor carpi radialis, flexor carpi ulnaris, extensor carpi radialis longus, extensor carpi radialis brevis, extensor carpi ulnaris, and palmaris longus, the muscle that involve. And for muscle that involve at time exit is flexor digitorum profundus, uh, flexor digitorum superficialis. Uh, okay, so that's two muscle that involve for thumb. And last but not least, for the elbow flexion from follow through, there is only one muscle that involve, which is bicep brachii. Okay, for test analysis, there is four, which is good foundation, timing, synchronous, and visualization. Okay, for good foundation is uh, your balance so when you do a release you need to balance yourself and when you do a follow through also you need to balance yourself so that's uh, when you do it the ball is uh, go as you want okay so next is timing for timing is uh, when you release the ball uh, you cannot uh, release it too early and cannot release it too late if you release it too early it will affect your power of your ball and the accuracy will not uh, accurate uh, and if too late it will fall because in bowling there are line if you release too late maybe you will step in the line okay and for synchronous you need to synchronize of your release and your movement so that uh, the ball goes as you want and last but not least is vis visualization Okay, so to improve your release and follow through, you need to visualize in your head, uh, remember and keep training in your head so that you do not do a mistake. Okay. Okay, now for form of motion, uh, we can define motion as the change of position of an object with respect to time. Okay, so in our analysis, we saw that in bowling, there are two forms of motion, which is uh, linear motion and curvilinear motion. Okay, so for the linear motion, it is happening when bowler go go for straight ball, so that the ball go in straight line. 
Okay. Meanwhile, for curvilinear motion, it is happening when bowlers go for the curve ball or hook ball. So the ball will go uh, by curving into the bowling pin. Okay, for the torque characteristic, okay, torque represent how far out of the ball it can keep to counter act at sit tilt and rotation, which result from rotating and rolling the sphere. In this case, bowling ball. Okay, so for bowling, it depends on the bowler how they want to release their ball before they can decide if they want to apply torque to their bowling ball. Because if they decide to do a straight ball, there is no need for torque. But if they decide to do a hook or curve ball, so it will, uh, they will use the torque characteristic. Okay, so for second of movement, there is five, which is elbow extension to elbow flexion, uh, wrist flexion to wrist extension, and then shoulder and hip rotation. Uh, time as it and elbow flexion from follow through. Okay, uh, here I will show you the picture. Okay, as you can see, uh, the number one picture is uh, elbow extension to elbow flexion. The number two picture is wrist flexion to wrist extension. The number three picture is uh, shoulder and hip rotation. The fourth picture is thumb, uh, is time as it. And the center picture, which is the fifth picture, is elbow flexion from the follow through. Okay. Hi, welcome to session two. In this section, I will be covering up the kinematic and the kinetic analysis of sports skills using the 2D video analysis. Performance analysis will enable athletes and coaches to receive feedbacks for improvements. So the purpose of this analysis uh, is to determine the attributes that contributed to the strike. Uh, and to observe the mistake that made by the subject. So for setup video recording and analysis, at that moment we don't have any fancy setup. We just use uh, the smartphones and ask one of our groomers to record the subject. And for the analysis, we just use uh, a software that is called uh, Kinovia, where Kinovia helped uh, biomechanists, practitioners, sports scientists to evaluate, uh, to, note to do the notation of the uh, biomechanics of the subject. So kinematic is described as the motion of points, bodies and system of bodies without considering the forces that causes them to move. And as you can see, these are the kinematic properties that I will be covering up today. So firstly, we have the range of motion, the track path, speed, uh, height of release, and lastly is the body alignment. So here we look on to the video of range of motion. You can see that the subject elbow is angled at 90 degree, which is good for starting position. And then followed by the uh, shoulder abduction, uh, angle at 203 degree. Uh, the angle uh, achieved is uh, good to generate uh, enough power and speed to transfer to the ball during the uh, releasing. So, uh, the hip, uh, uh, the shoulder abduction uh, is also good uh, instead of using the uh, shoulder extension because uh, shoulder abduction will uh, produce more uh, range of motion uh, than the shoulder extension. So, the function of track path is to track uh, the path of a specified trajectory, which in this case, it is the half spot so the athletes can have the benefits to uh, learn uh, how the movement of the uh, house ball and then to improve in the next row. So as you can see in the video, uh, the, the both upswing and downswing is pretty good because the, we can see the curvilinear motion uh, present in the motion. Speed is the distance covered in a unit of time. Speed plays a major part in uh, releasing during the swing phase uh, because it will influence the uh, force transferred to the ball. So as you can see in the picture, uh, the top speed was achieved during the downswing which is at 559 millisecond. And as you can see in the video, uh, the 
uh, the top speed, after the top speed was achieved, uh, a declination of speed is observed, uh, influenced by the poor release uh, by the subject. Because we know that the subject is uh, a recreational uh, player, so he has no technique. So, hence the explains the uh, poor release. Next is the height of release. We know that the swing's height will influence the potential energy production. Uh, this means that the higher the swing goes, the more uh, energy production will be produced uh, and to be transferred during the release. So as you can see in the picture, uh, the, the, the height is achieved uh, for 100 cm vertically from the ground. So uh, by pulling the ball uh, higher above your shoulder, and with the correct technique of dart swing, it will produce uh, immense uh, force to the ball. The last part for kinematics is the body alignment. I save it for the last because it is very crucial to have a proper body alignment during the swing phase because it will influence the, pro the performance of uh, release. I am referring to the uh, swing that we move to the side of the body and went straight under the head uh, naturally during the down swing it will increase the uh, directional accuracy. However, in the, in the analysis, we can see in the video, uh, the subject does not achieve proper body alignment during the release as the right hand is further away from the head. We want the right hand to be under the head. However, the subject did uh, a good thing which is the lateral spine tilt where the condition of its ball release shoulder uh, is lower than the other. So it is necessary to uh, to do this kind of uh, movement in order to create space for the swing and to add the leverage uh, to your release position. Kinetic is the study of relationship between the force system acting on a body and the changes it produces in a body motion. So these are the kinetics properties that I will cover up in the presentation. Firstly is the force which we have the Newton's law, uh, the first Newton's law, second and third and lastly is the torque. Newton's first law explained that a static object will remain static uh, if there is no force applied and an object that is in motion will stay in motion if there is no uh, outside force being act on the object. So the subject uh, needs to swing the ball from the rest position to generate the force during the release. The Newton second law explains the relationship between the acceleration and the force. Acceleration can be increased with an increased amount of force. It is said that force is equal to the mass of body and the acceleration of the body. Therefore, the subject can maximize the throw during the release when the body weight and the body mass of the subject is lowered, uh, hence gaining more acceleration during the swing and indirectly produces more force uh, to be transferred to the ball. Newton's third law explained that in every action of force, there will always be an equal and opposite reaction force. So imagining uh, a ball is given a high amount of force during the release, then the force uh, that is transferred to the ball will then exert uh, to the bowling pin and the bowling pin will exert an equal force in the opposite direction of the bowling ball. So uh, dispersing the chain force onto the uh, pins, allowing the pins to uh, hit one another, uh, resulting in a successful throw equals to a strike. Torque is a rotary effect of a force about an axis of rotation. However, in bowling, the term torque is mostly referred to referee. So what is referee? Referee is uh, used to describe the number of revolutions per second that your bowling ball makes depending on the speed of your ball and how you deliver it. So the higher the referee, the higher the chances to get a strike, but the 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 hardest part is you need to uh, have a high amount of force to get a high amount of referee. So we have done with the analysis. These are the strengths and weaknesses that I have identified in the video recording. So for the strength, 
the subject has a good body stability and balanced recovery as we can see during the release. Next is the torso is in well position but not for the hand because the hand is uh, far away from the hip. And lastly, the shoulder abduction is performed. We know that shoulder abduction is very good to achieve high angle in range of motion. We have to bear in mind that the subject is a recreational player. Therefore, there is a lot of mistakes, errors and weaknesses that I have identified in the video recording. Some of them are the elbow is not in line with the arm swing. There is no follow through. Follow through is very important to increase the accuracy. And lastly, uh, pull grip and release. Grip and release is very important to uh, increase the force to be transferred to the ball. That's all from me. There are a lot of way or step to maximizing uh, performance skills. Okay, one of uh, the step to uh, maximizing performance skills are perform skills very well. How to perform skill very well? Athlete uh, should mastering uh, fundamental or basic so that they will not uh, do silly or un unnecessary mistakes when uh, perform the skills. Lastly, uh, an athlete should have a good coach to ensure there is someone that monitor them to tell them what is right and what is wrong. Coach is also help in uh, give a lesson, educate them on how to achieve a maximum level of performance uh, the skills in the sport. Secondly, athletes should uh, improvise their mental training to ensure that they can cope with any situation that will disturb uh, their focus in order to perform the skills. This is one of the uh, core factor to ensure that the athlete will uh, perform performance skill at maximum level. So in a nutshell, the release is a crucial part of the bowling shot. All the hard work of your grip, stance and approach come together and you actually get to send the bowling ball down the lane and hit the pins. For, for those reasons, it is critical for serious bowler to gain a true understanding of the modern bowling ball in order to best utilize it on technique used by the athlete.